I have to confess something. Every time a politician starts talking about Australian values, I get a bit weird. But then I get weird about getting weird about it. Because I think, what's the problem? I like Aussie values. I like makeship. I like a fair go. I like drinking wine from a bag suspended on a rotating clothesline. So why am I getting sus at the mention of Aussie values? I got peak sus in September when the government announced added questions to the citizenship test that will focus on Aussie values. But then I thought, no, let the minister explain. Clearly we've got people today who come from all corners of the world and in some cases they come from countries which have fundamentally different value systems to Australia's value systems. So we want people to deeply understand our value systems before they become an Australian citizen. I'm happy to take any questions. Oh good, here's one. Are you using the ambiguous catch cry of Aussie values to implement an ineffectual policy that appears benign and legitimate, but only seeks to reinforce a divisive sense of nationalism, thereby placating a voter base that might be a little bit xenophobic? Hmm? Cause truth be told, I'm just not getting some of the stuff in this test. According to the minister, Aussie values include such things as mutual respect, freedom of religion and equality of opportunity. None of which are specific to Australia and the latter of which, one can argue, many people in this country don't actually have. Give us free childcare, lol. Another Aussie value we're pressing would-be immigrants on is the right to choose who you marry. So fundamental that we only legalised it in 2017 after a protracted and unnecessary postal survey in which the Prime Minister voted no. Meaning there could be a question on the citizenship test of Australia about a value of Australia that the leader of Australia could possibly flunk. Yes? What even is this test? To better understand that, we've got to go back to a few years ago in 2018 when Minister Tudge first proposed the Aussie values idea in a speech at something called the Australia UK Leadership Forum. In that speech, the minister warned that liberal values are being challenged, that diversity is good, but not when it includes those who want Sharia law and use violence to achieve their ends, that we should not tolerate female genital mutilation or child marriage or women being prohibited from driving. Sharia law? What? Prohibiting women from driving? Alan, just say it, mate. You know what word Alan Tudge didn't use in his speech? Muslim. But he didn't really have to, did he? And just a side note, if you think those using violence to achieve their ends are immigrants, you might want to cast your mind back to Christchurch 2018 or have a chat to the head of ASIO, who'll tell you that Neo-Nazis among Australia's most challenging security threats. Where's their Aussie values test just quietly? Anyway, I digress. In October, Liberal Senator Eric Abetz demanded three witnesses denounce the Chinese Communist Party before a Senate inquiry. Now this might seem unrelated to what I have just been talking about, but bear with me. The Senate inquiry was not about the Chinese Communist Party, nor, as far as we know, did the trio have any links to the Chinese Communist Party. The only thing that they had was Chinese ancestry, leading one of them to rightly ask, I was born in Australia. Why do I need to renounce the Chinese Communist Party? Yeah, Eric, why? Why should an Australian whose family has been here for 50 years, have to condemn a political party in another country that he has no link to or like of, except in your very strange brain. Is it because of that person's race? A query to which Eric insisted his questioning had nothing to do with race and everything to do with values. Oh, okay. It's not about race, it's about values. Kind of like how Alan Tudge's speech, the precursor to the citizenship test questions, wasn't about Muslims. No, it was about values. Gotcha. Here is a transcript from the Senate inquiry that day. It's clear that the three Chinese Australians being asked to condemn the Communist Party feel a bit, you know, targeted. 
One of them says to Mr Abetz... Not every other Australians of any other ethnicities have been asked the same question. To which Mr Abetz replies... Sadly, if you are of Italian origin, you'll be asked if you're part of the mafioso. If That's you're right. Vietnamese, are you part of a triad? German, like myself, you must be a fascist, irrespective of what your public utterances might be. Yeah, this is... This is shoddy stuff by Eric Abetz. When was the last time an Italian Australian got asked by a Senate committee, apropos of nothing, to denounce the mafia? When was the last time anyone used the word triad? Who is suggesting that Eric Abetz is a fascist by birth? I mean, sure, his great uncle was actually Hitler's ambassador to France, which, you know, that is awkward. But who? What, like a tool on Twitter? Do you want to know what the most telling word in that entire exchange was? Sadly. Eric Abetz knows that it's not okay to draw negative associations to individuals who've done nothing to warrant it, but he does it anyway and then couches it as some kind of noble exhortation of Australian values. And I think that's where my weirdness about the term comes from. It's not really ever about mateship or a fair go or playing goon of fortune. It often belies a a slightly more sinister reality. And it's applied selectively, and it's used as a dog whistle of sorts. It's funny, when all that stuff about Abetz's great uncle came out, who he's never met, by the way, Abetz said, I think most reasonable Australians would regard any attempt to slur me by association as completely unfair, and if I may say so, un-Australian. Hmm. So a slur by association based on ancestry, not an Aussie value then. Maybe some politicians need to sit their own special Aussie values test. 